Hello everyone, my name is Julia Jacobson and today I'm going to show you what's inside of my violin case. I am a violin performance major at the University of South Carolina and I've been playing violin for seven and a half years. So today I'm going to show you what has culminated in my violin case in those years and what I think are the most essential things to keep in your case. In case you're new here, I make classical music college and lifestyle videos and I would love to see my face in your subscription box. I'm also going to tell you what I wish I had in my violin case. So this case is a Tonarelli black oblong violin case. It is one of the more affordable cases but it's also fairly protective so I've been enjoying it and I think that they're great cases. Although I am looking to get a new case in the near future. Future. So first, we're going to start off with what's on the outside of my violin case, which is not too many things. One thing that I think is really important to have on your violin case is backpack straps. I have these two backpack straps right here, and I carry around my violin a lot. Just from my locker to the practice rooms, from my dorm to the music building. So these are an absolute essential for me. A few other things that I also have on my case are keychains. Each of these three keychains come from some of the most important musical memories of my life, and that's why I like to keep them on my case. So the first one is a Carnegie Hall keychain, and it's when I performed at Carnegie Hall with my youth orchestra. This next one is a keychain with Bach on it, and I got it at the Bach Museum in Leipzig, Germany, when I did a performance tour of Germany with my high school orchestra and choir. This last one is from the Kennedy Center, and it is actually my identification card that has all my information in case my case ever gets lost. I went to the National Symphony Orchestra Summer Music Institute, and yeah, those are my three keychains. Now let's open this thing. All right, so as you can see, there's not much going on. I know that normally when you see videos of people showing you their violin cases, they have pictures of their family and friends everywhere, and they have all this fun stuff and trinkets and such. Maybe one day I'll make a video of me decorating my violin case to make it a little more fun and personal. But anyways, I think the very first thing that you notice when opening my violin case is you see my bow. I actually normally have two bows, but if you saw my Instagram story from earlier this week, you know that I went and mailed off one of my bows to go get rehaired. So this is my backup bow. I still like to use it on occasion when I'm playing outside or stuff where I don't want to use my nice bow. Here is the bow. In case anybody's wondering, the bow was made by Alex Spanauer from Bernhardt Violins in Greenville, South Carolina. Shout out to them. Now the next thing you see is this protective cover on my violin, and it's actually not the one that came with the case. I have two different protective covers, but one goes under my violin, and then this one goes above my violin. I think it's really important to have as much protection around your violin in a case as possible, and one critique that I do have for this case is that it does not have very much inside protection, which is kind of frustrating, so I need to take matters into my own hands and try to protect it as much as possible myself. This comes from another violin case that I have at home, but yeah, that's why that's there. Next, we see my beautiful violin, which I love dearly. This violin is a French violin made in the early 20th century and I got it from Voss Violins in Atlanta. I got it really recently, a little less than a year ago, and it's been doing great. Like I said, I have a protective cover under my violin, so that's this one, and it's the one that actually comes with the case. This is gonna be a mess by the time I finish. Next, we have my shoulder rest, which I keep right here, and it is a Parastro Corfka rest. This is a great shoulder rest, but quite the investment. I was really lucky that my high school teacher actually just gave this to me right before I graduated. So that was really sweet, and I love the shoulder rest. I highly recommend it. It's also somewhat adjustable. The wood can be bent in different ways. Now I have this pouch that is in the front top end of my violin and that holds a majority of the things that I actually keep in here. So we're gonna take that out and take a look at what's inside. It's Velcro, which is really cool. So I could just take this thing out, whip it out, rehearsal, whatever I need it. So the first thing that I have in here is my Essential Dictionary of Music. This is probably the coolest thing that I have in my case. It basically is a dictionary of musical terms, composers, musical styles, music theory. It has all this sort of theory stuff. And it is the coolest thing I could ever have. And oh my God, and it's, here's what it says. Definitions composed of theory, instrument, and vocal ranges. The most practical and useful music dictionary for students and professionals. You know how much this thing cost me? $7, amazing. So I love this thing. 
I haven't gotten a chance to use it very much because, you know, orchestra, not really going on and, you know, but I'm really excited to use it more and be able to refer to it whenever needed. Like, it's just the coolest thing. Next, I have my cleaning cloth, which is currently kind of dirty, but it is a pink microfiber cloth. I highly recommend keeping a cloth in your case at all times because you want to clean up your instrument after every single practice session because that rosin can really easily get stuck on your instrument and then it takes a while to clean off at some point it just doesn't look good but if you clean off your instrument after every single practice session your instrument is going to consistently look good look shiny look amazing so i highly recommend getting a cleaning cloth it could be anything. It could be a random cloth that's in your kitchen. Anything. As long as you find something. Ah. Next, I have my pack of rosin. This is the Gustave Bernardel rosin. It's very, very common. I've used this type of rosin for the seven and a half years that I've been playing, and it's been great. Although, I am interested in trying different types of rosins, too. If you have any rosin recommendations, comment them down below. I would love to know. Next, I have two and one-fourth sets of strings. So... These are all old strings. These are not new strings. I like to keep extra old strings in my case in case one of the strings on my current violin breaks suddenly. A lot of these old strings are still in fairly good condition, but it was just time to change them because they weren't sounding as good anymore. So I like to keep the extra old ones in my case. Next, I have a bag of performance meats. I have three of them. I actually ordered them recently because I realized that I didn't have any mutes in my case for some reason, and I am in college and I need those. So I ordered them recently from Amazon, and now I just like to keep them in my case just in case I ever need them, or just in case I have any friends that ever need them. So if you need a violin mute, hit me up and make sure to give it back. Next we have my damp it. So in case you don't know what this is or how it works, basically in the winter months, you fill it up with water. It has a sponge inside and you fill it up with water. Then you dry out the outside of it as much as you can. You put it in the F holes of your instrument and it basically acts as a humidifier. And you can play with this thing inside of your instrument. You just leave it in the case. It works great for humidifying your instrument during the cold months. I personally don't have any kind of humidifier or electric thing in my case. So I find this to be really, really useful. Let me demonstrate how to put it inside the violin. You just get an F hole and you just sort of string it through and bingo. They make dampets for all sorts of string instruments and I think that these are a great way of humidifying your instrument. But in case you do decide to get one, please make sure you dry out the outside as much as possible. Moisture is really bad for your instrument if there's too much, especially if it's dripping out from this thing. So you have to be really careful, but it's a great tool, I enjoy it. Next, I have a black wing pencil. These pencils are specifically made for musicians and they are made of a really soft lead that's easy to write with, but also stands out really well on the paper. Paper, and I think that these are great pencils, but it's always important to keep a pencil in your case in case you forget one when you go to your rehearsal or your lesson. So the next thing is a pen. Now you may be like Julia, why do you have a pen in your case? There's no point in classical music where you ever need to use a pen for anything. Let me give you an answer. Although it may be useful just being a pen, it is even more useful for having a screwdriver in it. Do you see this thing? So I frequently need a screwdriver when dealing with my violin, and that is because of my chin rest and my shoulder rest a little bit too. Because to adjust those sorts of things, you need to have a screwdriver a lot of the time. And I happen to have one in my case, and it's really convenient, but it's also a pen. But yeah, this is just one of the really nifty things that I have in my case. The next thing I have is nail clippers which are extremely useful because when you're practicing and you realize that one of your nails is just out of whack, it's too long, you just easily cut it, take it out of your case, cut your nails, be done with it. And I find that it's especially useful to have it with me in the practice room rather than do it later because I know exactly which finger is being problematic and how much it needs to be cut. So it's just easier to do it in the practice room and take care of it then and there so that there's no issues later. Another thing that I keep in my case is this little lock with keys to it. Now, I haven't needed to use this yet, but I know that there's a chance at some point I will in case you put your instrument in a locker at your school and the locker doesn't have any kind of lock on it. This is a great option. Put a lock in your locker, keep the key in your keychain, and that keeps your instrument safe from anybody taking it, especially if you have a high-end instrument that was very expensive that you spent a lot of money on. It's really important to keep it safe 
and make sure that nobody can steal it or take advantage of it or harm it in any way. So this is a great thing to have. I currently keep my violin in a locker most of the time, which actually has a combination lock, which may or may not be better than this kind of lock, but I really like the combination locks too. Those are great. The next thing that I have is chin rest adjusters. So they're for the part of the chin rest that connects the bottom of the violin to the top. So my current chin rest doesn't need adjusters like these, but my previous chin rest needed adjusters in order to tighten and loosen the ends of the chin rest. So I think that these are really useful for that. The last thing that I have in here, besides a little bit of trash in here, which I need to clean out, is my broken zipper. So that is the final piece of thing that I have in here. Now that you've seen everything that's in my case and all of my essentials, we're going to go into what things I want to get for my case and a few other details about the things that I have inside my case. Sometimes I get questions from people asking what kind of strings I use. And right now I've been primarily using Vision Solo strings and also the Vision Titanium Solo strings, as well as the Perostro Universal E string. I really enjoy this combination for my instrument. Although right now, since we are in quarantine and it's still coronavirus times, and we're not playing very much in terms of orchestra and ensemble and such. I'm going to be using dominant strings with a Perostro Gold E for a little while because they're on the cheaper end, but they're still very durable and they still sound pretty good. So I'm going to be trying those. The only other set of strings that I've really tried is the Ava Perazzi strings. I do think that those strings sound absolutely beautiful. I love the sound of them, but they last for such a short amount of time, at least on my instrument, that it's not worth it to buy them every single time because they're so expensive. Now, what do I want inside of my violin case now that we've talked about it? So of course, I want to have more pictures and more personalized things in there because I think that, that would make it a lot more fun and would just bring a smile to my face every time I go practice. I would love to have something like that. I actually really want a BAM case. Specifically, I want the BAM high-tech contoured violin case that is carbon black. BAM by far has the the best reputation for violin cases. I've heard such great things from so many different players about BAM cases, so I really want to get one of those, hopefully soon. Another thing that I would love for my violin case is a Carmina Bruna violin bag, or just any kind of violin bag. I've heard that they are great for keeping your violin protected, and also sort of acting as like a humidifier or just a protective covering that prevents it from going out of tune and such. And I've heard great things about those violin bags, so I really want to get one of those as well. I would also really like to get a tracker to put in my violin case so that I know its location at all times. It would just give more of a sense of security that I know that my violin is safe. And in case anything ever happens and there is some kind of scare, I can track it easily and know exactly where it is. The last thing I would like to have in my case is a metal practice mute. So I have used like the large rubber practice mutes, but I've heard that the metal ones are even more effective, although you do have to be more careful with them but I would love to get a metal practice mute for when I need to be really, really quiet so that I can practice deep, late into the night and get my practice done whenever I want. Anyways, that is everything that is in my violin case and also things that I wish to get for my violin case in the future. If you have any questions about anything I have in my violin case, please just feel free to let me know, either comment or DM. And also comment down below what you keep in your violin case and what you think is the most useful thing that is in your violin case. I would love to know and hear everybody's responses. Also drop a like if you enjoyed this video. It lets me know that you enjoy videos like this and that I should make more content similar to this in the future. Also feel free to subscribe. I would love to have your support on this channel and I make a lot of videos related to classical music and stuff like this. And if you're interested in hearing about my violin process and progress, you can go follow me on Instagram at Julia Jacobson Violin and you can see nearly daily videos of what I do with my violin in my practice room. But anyways, that's all I have for you today and I hope you have a wonderful day. Bye! Bye.